Thank you for making the time and being here. And uh, you probably have received some of the briefing documents about this, what we're trying to do. This is the London Commission. And uh, this is the theme that's looking at health and wealth. Mm -hmm. How do we make London more attractive to the life sciences industry? Uh, how do we use the life sciences industry to drive economic growth in London? Uh, and at the same time, healthier Londoners means a healthier economy in London. So all sorts of interrelated uh, uh, sort of objectives. And you're well aware of the landscape. A lot has happened mm -hmm. in London the last few years, ranging from the academical sciences centres to the academical sciences networks, the Met City program. And uh, we're delighted that you're here because you're a director of a, an interesting company mm -hmm. and, uh, and wanted to get your own views, really, uh, on what could this commission do to further enhance the uh, London's profile and London's uh, attractiveness uh, to, to your sector. Okay. And you probably, just to introduce you, probably do. Or, or, sadly, Chris had to go, but okay. uh, David Fish from UCLP. Chris is the only one I know personally, actually. Yeah, I yeah. with. And David so. Fish from UCLP and, 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 and Peter. Great. Well, it, do you mind if I just take a couple minutes just to tell you a little Absolutely. bit more about what Healthbox does? Because I think it's useful for, yeah. for framing, um, framing our thoughts. Um, Healthbox is um, what's called a health tech accelerator. Um, we were founded by a company based out of Chicago called Sandbox Industries. Um, Sandbox is a specialist investor in healthcare. Um, their biggest thing, they, they, they're, they're particularly focused around strategic investment in healthcare with corporate partners. So the biggest thing that we do in the U.S., Sandbox does in the U.S., is manages the uh, venture funds of the Blue Cross Blue Shields Association of Health Plans. It's quite a significant fund, about $400 million, and they invest in health technology innovation. Healthbox is a little bit different from Sandbox in that we are focused on very early stage um, uh, collaboration and investment and innovation in healthcare. And we do that through an accelerator model where we bring together uh, corporates who are interested, corporates or healthcare sector organizations who are interested in um, technology innovation along with startups or innovators uh, coming from within the existing healthcare system or who are well outside it. And so we do that through um, accelerator programs in uh, four locations um, to date, three in the U.S., one in here. We ran our first program in London in 2012 and 2013. Um, our partners in that program were guys in St. Thomas Charity. Um, and, so, and so that's partly through where our relationship with Chris uh, comes from. Um, comes from, but also um, with Bupa was an investor in that program, Serco, as well as Bayer, the pharmaceutical company um, out, of their, out of Germany. And basically what we try to do is we try to bring together corporates who are interested in being more innovative, accessing innovation, but also even become, changing the way that they operate and becoming more innovative, and, match, and uh, using that interest to fund startup innovation um, on, that might be on the very margins of the industry. Um, and so our last London program, we invested in seven health um, tech, technology companies, ran them through a program, brought together a whole mentor community about them to support, help support them and try to help them scale up. And so that's sort of where our interest in, in um, the, you know, I guess the basis of our invitation to this and our interest in uh, the initiatives around MedCity, around healthcare and innovation and engagement, for example, um, uh, with the AHSNs. Um, Obviously, the, this kind of stuff brings benefits to the city in a number of ways and brings benefits to the city's health economy. Um, out of our last program, for example, we had seven ventures we invested in. Four came from outside uh, of the UK. Two were Irish companies that are now uh, based here, and two, one was a Romanian company and one was a German company. And they are now based out of here, operate here, employing people um, in, in, and engaging in the economy locally. So the initiatives, obviously, well, we, well, I think there's evidence that it uh, supports local local job creation and attraction of, of innovators to London through, through a program uh, such as ours. Um, the, um, we've had a look at, uh, and it obviously it also supports the broader innovation within the London health economy. If you look at, say again through our last program, of the companies that participated within it, um, the collaborations were the guys in St. Thomas, the Royal, uh, the, the Royal Marsden, um, 
at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, UCL Partners. There was a there was an engagement with one of our companies through there. Uh, pilot projects with um, with Bupa, um, you know, with with uh, and many other organizations throughout the healthcare economy. So, it's the, the, the one of the purposes of it is to improve innovation in healthcare, and certainly uh, through the last program, I'm, that's that's uh, certainly evidence that that took place. Um, We've been following uh, the mayor's comments around um, and the initiative around MedCity. We're really excited about it. Uh, we think it's a great idea to bring together um, uh, and to try to crystallize uh, London's offering, to promote it, to brand it, to throw resources um, behind that. Uh, we've already started having some conversations with different uh, parties about how we could cont potentially contribute to that through bringing um, some kind of variation on what we do, uh, hopefully in some way to the heart of the program. We think that there's definitely some initiative like that, uh, some kind of accelerator program belongs to the heart of it, and that it can go beyond just a simple accelerator program to include you know, broader sort of uh, mechanisms for collaboration between established actors and, and, um, and startup innovators um, and so on. So we're really excited about the initiative and, and we're, we're hoping that as it gets off the ground that we can contribute to it um, in some way. Um, in terms of looking at um, the existing health economy and the barriers to what we do and maybe some of the things that we can do to make it uh, um, work better, there are a huge number of barriers to um, health technology startups um, getting established or innovators getting established and getting traction uh, before they're killed off or die in, um, in everywhere, but um, in the UK economy and in London. And there's many, many different barriers to it. Obviously, um, you know, London is different from uh, the U.S. market, where the venture capital funding is probably uh, more accessible, so certainly finance is an issue. Um, other support mechanisms, you know, that they, they lack space. Um, the difficulty in engaging within um, the existing healthcare economy in London, and we, for example, we've had we've had um, a number of conversations with each of the AHSCs, different actors within the AHSCs in London. Um, there's a complete alignment of mission. Uh, between what we do and what they do, albeit ours in a more smaller area, there's uh, the HSNs have a broader, uh, much broader remit than we do. But there's definitely a, you know, a, an alignment of interest um, uh, between them. We and us. Um, one of the things that we feel is that. Um, the organizations are not well enough resourced yet or established enough yet to be able to fulfill their complete mission. I think everybody knows that. They, they didn't get as much funding as they needed. They're, they've only got their f sort of feet under their desks more recently. And in order to do one of the missions, which is engagement with, um, with uh, industry on the outside to increase innovation, um, certainly uh, in this early stage, I think they're focused on maybe bigger initiatives than engaging with startups. Um, and they don't have, and th there's a difficulty in allocating resource and having the mechanisms to do so. So while we feel in, uh, in principle interest from all the HCCs in engaging with us and the conversations all lead in that direction, we think it's hard in the current funding and um, structures of doing so. So um, over time, that may change as they get uh, more funding. Um, but, uh, and more resources. And I think that would be very important because, you know, startups, are, it's, the difficulty for startups is they only have a certain, you know, the startups we fund, we give them, our, we give them 50,000 in funding and through a mixture of bootstrapping, getting a little grant here, a little bit of money there, getting some in-kind services and support here and there, a little bit of funding from a collaboration, they manage to survive for so many, so you know, so much time until they can maybe get to a, a stage where they can um, raise later amounts of money. But the problem is, is if they're dependent on getting collaborations with the, um, for example, with actors within the NHS, and the decision-making cycle within that is very long, and they can't get through the system, and the AHSC, as much as they want to help through them, they don't have the resource to help them engage through the system, then it's easy to see that a lot of them won't survive just through the difficulty of engaging within the system. So I think um, in terms of, uh, one other thing I would just say is that um, there does need to be um, cultural change in terms of engaging with um, uh, the tech, health tech startup community among the existing um, um, ecosystem of players. I think there are people within the system who just see it as, oh, they're, they're doing a favor to a startup by maybe doing an introduction. They don't see innovation strategically, for example, as some of our, um, the equivalent partners that we might have in the U.S. 
um, you know, equivalent organizations we have in the U.S., they might, they'll develop whole programs, they'll fund whole programs themselves rather than, you know, just small parts of it. They'll, they'll raise large strategic funds just to invest in technology and innovation. And I'm not just talking about the Blue Cross Blue Shields group. We have other partners who have raised funds of, say, 10, 20, 30 million in size in order just to invest in health tech innovation. So um, I guess in relation to that, in, um, any types of incentives that can be given to uh, organizations that can act strategically in healthcare and engage uh, with startups and entrepreneur would also be um, would also be really useful. Um, other things that we would uh, anything that can enable that can speed up the collaboration between large organizations and small organizations, incentives, space. Other things that attract MedCity, I think, is will uh, might be able to attract large organizations to London, which then can, and part of which uh, I think uh, might attract them, or programs can be created around collaboration uh, with startups. I think that's another um, area that we can see things. And then things like other types of incentive systems that we've seen very helpful in terms of supporting uh, the technology innovators in London, um, startups in general, and incentives to the tax system or through pub other sources of public funding. Those would be other things that we would see as helpful. Well, that's fantastic. You've covered huge amounts, actually. In, uh, in, uh, you did mention structure, and then you mentioned mm. culture at the end. Yes. Uh, mm. And, uh, I mean, I doubt it's a structure. I think we created these structures, AHSCs, AHS yeah. sense to facilitate that. Is there mm. still a structural problem? I mean, I no, couldn't agree I more on culture. No, I shouldn't say structure. I should say mechanisms. Yeah. I think yeah. that the AHSCs have got yeah. the overall, the initial structures yeah. that are there. But I just think that there needs to be almost like mechanisms one level down within the AHSCs to enable that kind of collaboration yeah. on an ongoing basis. And I think that... You know, our conversations with the AHSCs indicate that there are some of those mechanisms being uh, put in place, but I, I think they're struggling with the lack of resources, initial resources, to be able to do so. So it's not for lack of will on that part, it's for lack of uh, funding. And is there a confusing entry into a structure? Oh, absolutely. In other words, you could have an AHSC door, mm -hmm. you can also have a university innovation or have you come across that? A university, um, most universities do have a, 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 a startup driving or accelerator, or I mean, Imperial has Imperial Innovation. You've yes. come across them. Yes, yeah, we work with do Imperial you think Innovation. That's confusing? We work with, we, yeah. we have, we are, we're currently working on, you know, government bids and stuff like that with UCL yeah. Enterprise. And, and uh, so, no, there's definitely, uh, that, it, that is definitely a path uh, okay. for which we engage through. I think. In, in the NHS as a whole, mm. it's hard for any small organization to navigate. We know that. I think the AHSCs and the HSNs are a starting point. <clears throat> yeah. But for example, we, you know, if I, I engage with um, one of Chris's lieutenants at, um, at, uh, Kings. at Kings or South London AHSN, and, uh, you know, in terms of the initiatives, she's just got only so much time in a day. Yeah. And if she's doing much more strategic initiatives, doing a big pharma, a big pharma program and collaboration, how does a small collaboration with a startup that has a solution around, small solution around, uh, you know, a technology solution around, um, I don't know, something like um, uh, physiotherapy or something like that, it doesn't rank in her order of priorities. And I think even that, despite the fact that all of these little innovations are going to have a massive impact on the system over time, yeah. I think she's just got only so many things that she can focus on. So it's the resources, so, the human capital. I think it's probably the resource yeah. and the mech yeah. So there's a lack of... Uh, the, 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 yeah, there's a lack of resource. Um, and again, just having one person in an AHSN or an AHC whose job is to engage with industry, industry. I mean, that's just never going to be enough. You okay. need something, you need more than okay. that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Peter. Thank you. That was really helpful. Really Thank appreciate you. that. Um, I'd like to tap into your experience in terms of financing. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea of the sandbox, health box. Yeah. What stops London doing more in terms of VC? And what would you like to see happen that we could help you with from the Commission to stimulate more finance access in London? 
Um, well, I certainly think that the, um, some of the programs that are already run by the mayor's office or run through the mayor's office through, for example, things like ERDF funding, mm -hmm. I think that they are a, um, a lifesaver in terms of making uh, the accelerator model work in London. We didn't get funding under those programs on our nurse program. It was all corporate funding. But, I mean, the, the economics of making startup venturing work are really, really difficult. Um, and to make it work uh, for a variety of reasons in terms of follow-on dilution. There's a whole range of reasons and obviously the high risk. So I think mitigating some of that risk through public funds I think is important. And I mean, obviously some, you know, people might be against that, but um, the benefits to the broader economy w with the, you know, even if only um, one or two ventures succeed out of say a cohort of 10, it pays it back in, in spades. I mean, I think there was some studies in terms of US programs, I don't know the equivalent in the UK, um, but US <coughs> programs where for every dollar invested through, a, through an accelerator program, the city got $7 back in tax over time. You know, it, it does, as we know, with with Tech City, getting these ventures off the ground stimulates the, um, the local economy. So I think public funding is one of them. Um, I mentioned um, uh, tax incentives. I, I've seen um, the benefits of the government's um, enterprise investment scheme programs and attracting new money from angel investors to the, se to the sector. I think any other kinds of um, incentives that can bring people in so one being match funding, other being um, tax incentives, I think would be, a, would be amazing. I, mean, I think it'd be really great if, for example, strategic, some strategic investors from healthcare organizations could be given some incentives for engagement, collaboration, investing, and early stage innovation. Corporate. Corporate. I'm talking about okay. corporate, yeah, yeah, because our model is very much a corporate mm. model. I mean, we, we have occasionally financial, pure financial investors in our programs, but historically it's all been strategic investors from the healthcare community that have invested through our program who are interested in becoming more innovative through okay. engagement with, with that's, outside that's, it. That's really helpful. So yeah. it's more around the corporate incentives yeah. to allow them to... Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. That was helpful. Do, do, do the, does industry, do you think we've communicated enough to industry that the you know, the patent box here, the corporation tax is now whatever it is, it's 10 percent, I think. Is that what it is? You mean in terms uh, of, or, you mean in terms of corporates uh, uh, outside? Corporation the, tax. Yeah, for, for mm -hmm. industry outside who comes yeah. and, s and supports startups or invests in mm -hmm. here. Do, are you, is that, do you think we've communicated that as um, well as we should be? Is that attractive, well, I, the, tax, it's just, the tax rules? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think, yes, I think it, it, it does make a difference. I mean, I think, um, I just think it's really interesting that how much more um, strategic funds there are out of health care organizations in the U.S. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a broader problem. I mean, it's never going to be the same in yeah. a system that is dominated by the public sector mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, people invest strategically because they need to compete. Sure. And you innovate. And you, yeah. you, you want to innovate because you want to yeah. compete. I mean, competition in our mm -hmm. systems, everybody knows, is, is yeah. much more complicated. The hospitals complicated. you mentioned are all foundation trusts. You didn't mention to me one. Do they well, pay? Um, BMI, we, one or? of our ventures uh, yeah. is doing a big rollout Beside in BMI. The, yeah. at but you the don't moment. have an NHS organization that is not a foundation trust. You didn't mention one. Did you, is there others like? Uh, in terms of people that we collaborate yeah. with, well, we, we, well, besides say the the AHSCs and AHSNs, yeah, yeah. Work, but no, they've all been foundation yeah. trusts. Okay. I've I've tried to engage. Um, I haven't reached out to the C we haven't reached out to the CCGs um, okay. yet over yeah. the last year. We did reach out to some of the organizations who mm -hmm. engage with them, but no, okay. not 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 that community. But that's obviously a potential. And, um, and if there's organizations within the system who you would think yeah. would want to adopt innovation to deliver their mission, yep. they would be one of them. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Definitely. David? Uh, thank you very much. It's fascinating. I, three things I wanted to ask you about. One of the earlier speakers said about a difference in culture between the UK and US in how you viewed failure. That mm -hmm. in, the, in, you know, in the US, the, the entrepreneur was expected to fail, fail quickly and move on. Yeah. In the UK, you failed and your head was chopped off, to put it politely. Is mm -hmm. that something that that would resonate with your own experience? I think there's still a difference between the UK and the US on that front, but it's not nearly as significant as it used to be. I think there's been a sea change in culture around entrepreneurialism and in, um, well, in the UK, but even more broadly uh, within Europe. So I think that culture, that, that, cu that is gap's changing. Closing. The gap's closing. But again, if you, you, if you look at the issue, if you look at... Um, the things that you need behind that to, to make the, the difference, um, there's still uh, much less 
funding available at the early stage in the UK uh, versus the US. There's still a much less willingness to support ventures for a long time until they get their business model established. So, um, you know, all of those things still exist. So again, some some changes, but not uh, not 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 nearly as far along. And, and hence, I mean, somebody said to me recently when we, you know, when we came to the UK, we focused. Um, and I should say, by the way, I'm a Scot, born, oh. born in the UK, and I've been here for 20 years. But Healthbox as an organisation came from the US. And um, is that a Scottish accent? No, well, it's a Scottish Canadian oh, accent. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when we came, uh, when when Healthbox first came to the UK. Um, uh, Healthbox adopted the American model, which was approach strategic investors, get them to fund the program. Uh, we managed to get enough investors for our first program. And some of those we, we expect will carry on in our next program. Um, but we believe that over the longer run, we probably won't be able to support our programs just through strategic investors, that we will need support from uh, probably some public money and probably angel investors as well, or pure financial investors. Um, through the process of learning and understanding the UK market and how to navigate it, for example, I was told that 56% of early stage funding for startups comes from um, uh, the government. Um, you know, that, there is a huge gap at that level, which is largely filled by venture uh, investors and, and indeed obviously corporate investors um, uh, in the US. And then, and then another big uh, source of the funding is angels. So again, I just think, you know, it, it's, I find it um, startling, the initiatives that come out of our um, parent organization in the US in terms of the type of initiatives that big healthcare organizations are taking and how much money they're willing to invest in technology innovation. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I wish there was ways of doing that here so if we can find ways to incentivize corporates to do it. I think in the longer run, it'll change the culture and benefit the whole system. Second question was about this scale mismatch you talked about. Mm -hmm. um, the three HSNs and Cs are different in London, but in a way, we c there's no possibility that any of them could copy, duplicate what's going on, on at a massive scale in the universities and hospitals. They mm -hmm. could only be a catalyst. Mm -hmm. and I just wondered if the, you felt that you were being directed in the wrong place because if there's a small enterprise, you gave the physi physiotherapy example, would that uh, match better with single provider or we're trying to engage at a whole system serving six million people at, at once? And I just wonder if the AHSCs and ends have been mispositioned to to industry in that way because whilst we can be a catalyst you rightly point out there's very little resource that goes with that mm -hmm. less than 0.1% of the resource in the partner organisations uh, I just wondered if your experience in London had been that you'd had better interfaces interactions with individual organisations rather than collectively okay. I mean, yes. it's appealing to Absolutely. collectively do it but it's almost impossible unless yes. it's a huge strategic project. Yes. I think unless there was HSC or HSN staff directly dedicated to this, and again, I know that some of the HSNs and HSCs are talking about creating kind of marketplaces where, you know, for start, you know, startups mm. and innovators to introduce their innovations and create um, collaborations, um, but I think the existing uh, uh, infrastructure that's within the HSNs probably doesn't, isn't enough there to support it. They would need to have more money or more staff or other ways of, you know, some s sources of self-sustaining financing in order to be able to do that. And so, yes, the vast majority of our collaborations currently were not obtained through um, engaging exactly. by the HSCs. It was through directly within NHS organizations. I can see that. The mm -hmm. scale is the yeah. scale mismatch. That's yeah. fine. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Thank you very much. You've been uh, fantastic to give us the insight and uh, please keep in touch with us and if you wouldn't mind we may seek your advice intermittently between now and the commission is published great and uh, I know Peter would absolutely no, yeah. really like valuable that. That, value that insight thank but thank you very much, much. it was our thank pleasure you. to contribute thank you thank you and good luck thanks, thanks.